which is an antibiotic, and they reported a response rate of over 90 percent, which is approximately the same as we see with, uh, uh, with uh, the lenalidomide and the dexamethasone, or perhaps just a little better. But this has not yet been compared with the conventional uh, Revlimid dexamethasone approach. Another option is bortezomib, Velcade, uh, uh, given a conventional dose of 1.3 milligrams per uh, square meter twice weekly for two weeks every three weeks, plus dexamethasone. And uh, the response rate was reported at 90 percent. Overall survival, 67 percent at four years, which is very impressive. Now, just a couple of words about autologous stem cell transplantation. I'm only going to show you uh, one trial in just a moment here. The advantage of an autologous stem cell transplant for multiple myeloma is that the mortality is low, uh, about 1 percent. And in fact, in Rochester, uh, we, do about, we start most of our patients as outpatients and we complete the whole procedure as an outpatient in almost half of patients. So it's much uh, easier and uh, much better for the patient not being in the hospital. It's available for up to half of patients with multiple myeloma, but on the downside, these reinfused stem cells are contaminated by tumor cells and the patient must be told that this is not a curative procedure. And the duration of response of transplant is extremely variable. Some patients will, unfortunately, uh, progress within a matter of months. Others will go 10, 15 years. The average is about two years overall. Now, uh, I'm not going to show you that uh, slide on uh, transplant, but it merely uh, uh, showed that transplant was superior to conventional chemotherapy. Now, I want to go on and say a few words about the treatment of the patient who is not eligible for an autologous stem cell transplant, either because of age or other medical problems, or perhaps uh, other uh, circumstances. <clears throat> For many years, we used malfilan and prednisone. And then, uh, uh, four years ago, Dr. Uh, Palumbo from the Italian myeloma group reported uh, on 255 patients who they deemed ineligible for a transplant and randomized them to malfilan prednisone thalidomide or malfilan and prednisone alone. And you can see the response rate and the complete response rate were both superior with the MPT as well as the two-year event-free survival and the three-year overall survival. But there was, and uh, well, I'm not going to show you that slide because of time, but there were increased side effects with the MPT. Another study from the uh, uh, French myeloma group this time, uh, a group of patients with myeloma greater than 75 years of age, randomized to MPT, malfilan prednisone thalidomide, or uh, or to malfilan and prednisone alone. And again, progression-free survival and overall survival superior in the MPT patients. Now, as time has gone on, this difference in overall survival has disappeared in some of the MPT studies. Another option is uh, 
a combination of lenalidomide and prednisone. And in this uh, dose-seeking uh, study by Dr. Palumbo, uh, malfolan 0.18, lenalidomide 10 milligrams daily was the maximum tolerated dose. And in Western Europe, Dr. Palumbo has just completed a study and reported it briefly. Uh, recently, it has not yet been published, but the malfolan, uh, but the uh, lenalidomide uh, along with the malfolan and prednisone was superior to the malfolan and prednisone alone. Another option. Uh, for these patients is bortezomib or Velcade. Uh, and this is a study of over 600 patients in which they were randomized to receive either uh, bortezomib and malfolan or malfolan uh, and prednisone alone. And in this study, the complete response was much better in the malfolan prednisone velcade group compared to malfolan prednisone, 30% versus 4%. Partial response or better, 71% versus 35%. And duration of that response also superior in the MPV patients. There was a price to pay. Peripheral neuropathy was a problem in almost 40% of the patients. Now, <clears throat> unfortunately, most patients with multiple myeloma will ultimately relapse uh, and need to be treated again. And my general rule of thumb is that if the patient has responded to a regimen initially and that regimen was adequately uh, tolerated and the patient has responded uh, more than a year, or relapsed more than a year later, then it's wise to go back to that original regimen because it's very likely that that's going, you're going to respond to that again. And you want to get as much mileage as you can out of each regimen. <clears throat> this uh, study, or three studies, uh, indicate that thalidomide as a uh, single agent produced a objective response in about a third of patients with relapsed refractory multiple myeloma. Bortezomib, another uh, agent for the relapsed patient, produced an objective response in 35%. <laughs>